Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to cover something that I get asked all the time. For those of you familiar with my videos, I have this thing called a status box. It's built into my Tech Help free template, which is a free database that I use in most of my Tech Help videos. And it's simply a big box where you can send messages to it. And I have just a button here that just says, hello world. But you can use it for displaying variables or giving the user messages, or it's basically a replacement for a message box that pops up in your face and you have to hit okay. This will allow execution to keep going, but yet give you a track record of what's going on. It's kind of like a debug.print, but it works in runtime. But a lot of people ask me, hey, can we use this from other places? Like if I open up the customer form, right? Can I have this thing send messages here? Sure. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. I'm going to show you how to make the status function global so it will work from anywhere in your database. Any form can use it. Any bit of VBA code can use it. Of course, you'll still need to be able to see it, right? Don't cover it up. Make sure that, you know, this form opens up over here or something. Um, but yeah, then you can use it from anywhere in the database. First, some prerequisites. This is a developer level video, but I'm going to take it nice and slow. Okay. So this is like kind of like a beginner developer video. So first off, if you haven't watched my intro to VBA video, go watch this first. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Watch my initial status box video. This teaches you how to set up the status box. And in this one, I show you how to put a status box on multiple forms. So you can put a unique status box on every form if you want to. But today we're going to make it so they all use the same box. And also go watch my variable scope and visibility video. Now this explains what a global variable is. It's a variable you can use from anywhere in the database, not just the form that you're on. So this is important. Go watch this video too. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those, then come on back. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is go into design view here. Let's go into the code for our button, right click build event. That'll bring up our code builder. All right, now in here, this is the form module, right? This is the module that's built into the form main menu F. And here is my private sub status. This means that only this form can call this subroutine because it's private. So we're going to move this to a global module. So I'm going to just cut that out, snip, all right? Get rid of the extra spaces there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go down to my global module. Now, if you don't have a global module, there's one built into the tech help free template called global module. If you don't have one, you can create your own, go to create and then module, and that'll do the same thing. Don't use a class module, use a regular module. Okay. I got a whole separate video on that, but in the global module, this thing in here, I got a sleep subroutine that allows you to make the system wait for like a second or two. We're going to just put this right on top of that. We're going to put it right here. All right, private sub status. Now, we don't want it to be private because if it's private, only this module will be able to use it. So we're gonna change this to public. Now, everybody in the database, every form, every report, every other module can see this status subroutine. Okay, so now it has scope and visibility. All right, the entire database can use it. Now, first thing we do is we send in S as a string. That's the message we wanna put in the box. Okay, that's fine. And right here, we're saying status box equals S and VB new line and status box. Here's the problem though. Do a debug compile and it says variable not defined. It has no idea what status box is. Okay. Now status box is a text box on this form status box. But in order to use it here, not on that form, we have to call it by its full name, which is forms main menu F status box. All right, we had to do it here. We also have to do it there. It's going to say forms main menu F status box equals S, whatever we send into it, and a new line, and then the rest of the status box. So it just adds a line on top. Now, if we debug compile, we get away with it. It seems to work. Okay. If you're not familiar with that naming convention, go watch this video. This is what I call an expert level video. So it's not quite up to the developer yet. That's why I didn't mention it before. I assume you already know this, but that's okay. If you don't know it, go watch this video. Now at this point, if I come back over here and I hit my button, let's save this stuff. If I hit my button, it still works because this button is calling status, but status is now in here. 
but the status knows to use this box. Okay, now if I go to a different form, okay, let's say I want to put a button on this form to do the same thing. I'll just copy one of these buttons, copy paste, right? And then we'll right click, build event. Yeah, I know you should give your button a good name, but this is just a test. It's command 30 is fine. Here I'm going to say status hello from the customer form. Okay, same thing. All right, debug compile once in a while. Come back out here, let's close it, open it, and let's hit the hello button. And there it goes, so you can see it in the background. Like I said, don't cover that box. You could force this menu form to come to the foreground if you want to. I, I personally find that kind of annoying. I'll show you how to do it though. In the status function itself, right click, go to definition, that'll bring you right to it. All right, what you could do is here, you could open the form. If you say, do command dot open form status, or excuse me, main menu F. I can't type today. Then what that'll do is it'll open the form, which if it's not open, will open it for you, which that could be a problem, right? Won't generate an error message. And it also has the secondary effect of putting it in the foreground. So if you are gonna issue messages, burp, that brings it to the foreground too. I, I usually reserve this for when I'm either A, debugging stuff myself, or if I wanna give the user a message. Right, and if something happens here that's going to generate a message for the user, you might want to bring this message box to the foreground, right? Okay. So that's it. Pretty straightforward today. Lots of people ask me this, so I figured I'd make a video about it. That's what I make videos on, the things that people ask me the most. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond Sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an Access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing. Free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker, 
Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.